Hey everyone, my name is Delana Burns and I'm with you tonight on Flying Unicorn. I would like to share a layout with you that I created and um, got a few techniques and some stitching and tons of fussy cutting and some different things we're going to do to this page. So um, just let you know in advance, I'm not going to be able to pan the camera up and down. So tonight you're just going to see my hands and I'm trying to keep my focus and uh, all good on our actual class so um, just going to move right straight into it you can see we've got this 12 by 12 layout I've got tons of fussy cutting and lots of beautiful prima flowers and um, I've done some stitching you can see I'm going to try to get it close and then let it focus we've got some stitching and some background stencil circles with some modeling paste on this really pretty uh, script paper and you can see I've got just a really small photo of my sweet little grandbaby and um, anyway just lots of stitching and lots of little sequence details so going to um, kind of lay our page to the side hope y'all got adjusted the details there so I'm just going to kind of lay it to the side and I, so I can still see it and remember what my details are and it takes, takes me a minute obviously I'm going to grab the first paper that I used and it's this background script and you can see I've already done part of the stitching in advance and um, I've already used the bubble stencil on the background so that that would be dry I didn't want to bore y'all with having to do most of the stenciling and the stitching so what I did to get that stenciling there I used this wonderful Prima bubble mask I just laid it down and see we're gonna have I'm afraid we're gonna have issues with um, with our with our focus again tonight but you can see I used Prima's modeling paste and a spatula I just laid the stencil down with a large scoop and just across the top and down this right side I just stenciled the bubbles that are there I just went right straight down this entire side leaving about three-fourths of this area here um, with nothing no stenciling at all just in there you're welcome to do the whole page if you want to recreate this I just kind of wanted to put my texture in this top area and this right hand side all the way down so to recreate that stenciling that's that's what you need to do the next thing I did is I used I used my architect tool here my um, you can get this in like a, the architect section of um, hobby stores or your um, what am I trying to think of office supply stores any stores like that so that you've got your straight edge across the top and let me grab a pencil what I did is just I sort of envisioned my lines going long here and then just random stripes of stitching and I wanted it kind of tone on tone I've got the creamy paper with the sort of opaque modeling paste and then the creamy thread and it just gives lots of layers of texture um, not so much color not so much in your face just really subtle touches of texture and that's kind of what I was going for so what I did is just lay my ruler down um, I knew I wanted one long area here so I just sort of lined it up at the top and drew a line I moved over to the other side and I drew another line and I was just kind of eyeballing this just kind of drug the pencil down about not quite halfway about um, probably an inch or two from the middle and then I just went in and randomly added lines just straight down um, and some longer and shorter I just staggered them really nicely so that you get that staggered effect if you can see that you see we've got long short short longer longer they're just kind of moving up and down no no rhyme no reason I just kind of wanted that that random texture there so you're going to draw your lines I did leave a few lines here that I have not stitched I use the DMC floss that you can pick up in your hobby store or even in Walmart uh, so I just threaded a really large hole needle 
I use all six uh, strands of floss when I do this and this is just your standard embroidery floss so what I do is turn the paper over and I start in my well actually let me show you that I punch the holes first let me grab my my trusty piercer and show you this is an old colossal foam pad but you can use cardboard or uh, they make stitching pads that you can use to stitch through but you just lay it down and since this top portion here is going to be covered with another piece of paper I moved down about a eighth of an inch or so and just right at the top of those lines I drew I punched a hole in every one of them across the top and then I just moved down to the bottom of each one and punched punch the hole at the bottom because I'm just going to do long stretches of stitching uh, so that we've just got long pieces of thread there so you can see I've done that all the way across and each one has a hole at the top and at the bottom so that's our that's our stitching process and you can see when you lay this down on this foam uh, it's not like landing on a hard table you're going to be able to pierce through your actual paper really easily so that is our quick lesson on our stitching process so now back to our thread and again this is the DMC floss and um, Walmart hobby stores just wherever you can buy embroidery thread that's what you want and um, all six strands because I wanted this really textured so I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to go through my bottom hole first so just put your needle through and pull all your thread through and I use a really long piece of thread um, don't see well these days my age is showing and so I need it to last a pretty long time I don't want to thread the needle 20 times so I just deal with the long piece of thread you want to go in and then the next thing you're going to do is turn it back over go through your top hole right here thread it in and you're just doing this threading in an in and out motion um, I'm sure most of you have probably stitched before but um, for anybody that hasn't, I just kind of want to show you how easy it is. And threads and stitching is just, and just I just kind of roll it back and go through my next hole, grab it with my fingers on this side, and um, pull it through again. With the longer pieces of thread, you might, might try to knot up on you a little bit. You just kind of have to give it a tug. Then you want to go through your top hole here. You're just going up and down. Um, and you see it, it likes to kind of wad up when you when you've used such a big piece um, just kind of pull it give it a little tug and it'll it'll work for you sometimes the end gets a little frayed and I like to snip that you see it just kind of frays a little bit so I just kind of snip that off and throw that to the side so I don't have that problem snagging me every time again I'm going through the back pull it through down through this bottom and then you're getting these straight lines of stitching so this is going to be really quick because I only left a few lines to do here and again I'm going through the back that hole down there pull it through and then in the top hole here because my design is covering the top and um, kind of the sides of both of these tops I didn't go all the way to the end saved myself some time you can do that if you like but I just saved myself some time and um, didn't go all the way on the ends so what I'm going to do is leave an inch or two there and I'm going to grab my tape I just used some scotch tape and pull that kind of tight and just tape that down then I want to kind of go across the back and tape down my knot so nothing pulls out I don't want to snag this while I'm working but I am going to actually glue a piece of card, an actual piece of chipboard to the back of this tonight because I want this really sturdy. I don't, because I've used the modeling paste, it's warped just a little bit. So I'm going to take a 12 by 12 piece of chipboard. And this is just a pretty thin piece of chipboard that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Um, came in a pack of about 25 pieces. You can use your chipboard that comes in the mail with your 12 by 12 papers or whatever you like. I wanted to cut just a little bit off the edge because I don't want it to show on the outside. And then I'm just going to glue this down. Grab my glue. Oh, grab my, <clears throat> grab my new glue because this will come out easier. So what I'm going to do is just add a little glue 
to the back. Not, not really careful with this. It's Fabri-Tac, so it's going to glue it down well. So I'm on the back, so I'm just going to kind of flip this over and tack it down. And that's going to cover most of that, that I would normally kind of be careful and tape those threads down. This is going to help to cover those. And it's also going to flatten my page out and make me happy. So it's covering up all of my pencil lines. My stitching is just going straight down and laying exactly like I want it to. So um, it's all about making me happy. Next, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you this piece of paper. And I'm going to show you what I have done. I've actually gone in. I didn't bore y'all with these details either. I went ahead and I fussy cut. I think I did a pretty good job leaving it like a puzzle. It kind of still looks like a complete piece of paper. And then the magic is when you pull it up and I fussy cut all this. And I fussy cut this so fast. Literally it took maybe 10 minutes. Uh, I was on the phone and um, I did it really really quick. So what I want to do is I want to the way I did my design, I want to go just a little on that corner, across the top, and down the right side. So I want to cut around this flower right here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go in with my scissors, and I'm going to just get this flower right down here. And I am not careful with this. I'm going to ink the edges. So if I chop off a little more than I should, or I leave a little green, um, doesn't bother me. I just want to get this flower out. Um, just like that. That's what I want right there for my page. And you can see I'm losing my flowers, but you can see that is the design right there. Just like that. Those four sides right there. Okay. Got to figure out where that flower was. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is grab my ink. And first I'm going to do the outside. Just going to run my chalk edger. This is a Prima chalk edger down the side. And um, run my chalk edger all down the side first. If I move in a little more than, or get a little ink on the inside, I don't, I don't mind. Just go down and then go in really quickly and just ink up this inside right here really quickly we may get done really early tonight I've worked ahead and this is a really fast layout to put together it's just lots of floral um, lots of flowers just lots of floral little embellishments and um, these fussy cut pieces we're gonna pop this up on some cardboard and make this kind of stand up and then do our little photo. I've actually used a die for the photo, so. And my chalk edger's coming apart there. This one's been used a lot, so it's trying to come apart. I may need to grab another one. Let me grab another one. Hold on just a second. I think I've just about used that one up, so let's see. We have to open one. Let's do that real quick. Let's just open a new one. These are sh just little shrink wraps pretty tight on here usually. So this will be nice and juicy now. It'll go on even faster. But what I want to do is just all on the inside. You don't have to get every bit of it. Just sort of hit the high points if you have to. I just like that extra little bit of detail and dimension that the inked edges gives so if you don't like that you, by all means you do not have to do that I just think it adds to it you could always use a pen or um, you could use your little Tim Holtz um, can't think of what they're called but y'all probably know what I'm talking about the little Tim Holtz little spongy deals to do this I'm just I'm, I'm kind of a lazy scrapper. I just grab the ink and kind of just go to town and let it let it just happen for me fast. I like it to be quick and easy and done. It's 
probably why I don't do a lot more mixed media because I just I kind of kind of want to get to the finish line and um, when I do a lot of mixed media I want to take it to the sink and rinse it off so um, I just keep those subtle touches I like the tone on tone a lot so got our page got our actual fussy cut pieces let me grab my cardboard next thing we're going to do is add some cardboard to pop this up so I'm just going to cut strips and I'm going to grab my big scissors Grab my Tim Holt scissors for this. Just want to cut a few strips, just kind of thin strips. I'll cut about three slices here just to be sure we have enough. And what I'm going to do is just cut this kind of off in chunks and lay it around my edges. I don't want it to show. So um, just be sure you kind of have it hid and you want enough to really hold this up. We're going to add some flowers in and around and tuck them in so you don't want to go all the way out to the edge but you do want to be sure you do have enough so that that area doesn't collapse. Just keep adding a few pieces. Okay, I think that's going to do that. Grab my glue again. And then you're just going to glue them down. This may just be the fastest show ever. Uh, actually, ever. We'll see. Let's see if it um, comes together as quickly as I think it's going to. I think I'm going to actually add this piece like right here. And just sort of shift all these down. I got a little more that I can cut right here. Let's have maybe one more piece right here. Okay, this is this seems a little bit wide here, so I'm actually going to add a little bit thinner piece. Let me cut this down some. That's already got some glue there. So we may need to add some flowers up in there. Okay, so you see that's going to now be popped up. So we're going to grab our script paper. And you see how that's kind of going to lay on top there. I'm trying to move my mess out of my way as I go. Okay, so it's going to lay just about like that. So let's turn these back over and add some glue to our cardboard. And y'all can use pop dots. Uh, you know you're always welcome to use pop dots. When you see me use cardboard, I am cheap and cardboard is free and I prefer to spend my money on Prima Flowers, so I use cardboard. Just kind of lay that down, line that up, I'm going to stand that up so I can kind of see that it's nice and lined up, popped up just a little bit. I really wish I could read the chat. This would be a great show to be able to read the chat. I see Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Barbara. I can see names. Hey, Lydia. I just can't read the fine print. Okay, there we go. That's like that. So can y'all kind of see our texture in there? Kind of kind of just coming on down. Don't you love my hand motions? I can do that because all y'all seen are my hands tonight. So I'll just use my hands. I, could, I can speak sign language. But I don't know that y'all could tell what I was saying in this, in this position. So next... We are going to move on to some more fussy cutting. Um, and I am a very fast fussy cutter. I don't take a lot of pains with it. I used some more of the paper <clears throat> and I wanted some more of these images. I actually punched this. This is what our photo is going to actually adhere to. So I used just a any scalloped uh, punch that you have that's an oval shape. 
sort of works with this because it's going to kind of be in this area. I already fussy cut this little guy, just a little butterfly fussy cut from the paper. And I've got a little bird here, so I want to first chop out this little birdhouse so y'all can see. I don't take a lot of pains with this. If I cut some of it off or if I leave a little bit of the um, outside, I, I don't mind. I'm going to ink this and um, cover up any lighter color that's there. I love this birdhouse, so I wanted to use it. Um, if you don't have this paper line, if this happens to be a paper line that you don't have, uh, this is Marion Smith's. Um, you can use any floral paper line. If, you, if it's not in this same shape like this at the top, create that yourself. Uh, fussy cut, use a floral, a bunch of flowers to make just a floral design sort of in that shape. Pop it up. You can still do the stitching. You can still make this entire thing work um, even without this actual paper line. But I'm just going to continue to fussy cut it. I know when I'm fussy cutting or usually when I'm stitching and I'm on my own I'm kind of biting my tongue or I kind of have my mouth open. I've kind of been told that I sort of sit in a, with an odd look on my face. I, I just get zoned in to the moment I guess and I, I zone out to everything else going around. But on the show here I'm, I'm continuing to talk so I probably don't look like that. So you can see just, um, this is a really, really quick process. And I love to do this while I watch TV or whatever. I just, I enjoy the fussy cutting. I know a lot of you don't like it, but, but I do. So you don't even have to fussy cut. You could find a birdhouse. There's so many beautiful products. You could find a birdhouse already cut for you. So we're going to use him. And then I'm going to cut this little bird out. And I just chopped away at the paper. I'll show you. Uh, if I can find which paper I chopped up. This was the paper here that I chopped up. You can see the birdhouse was here and the bird was here and the little butterfly was here. So I just um, sort of chopped them out so I could get started. And I don't want his branch, but I do want a little bit of his little feet. So I'm going to save a little bit of those little feet there. don't need a lot of detail of the feet. I just didn't want to cut them off. He's he's going to be kind of standing, not flying. So I, I like to see his little feet. And when I'm fussy cutting, I don't know about y'all, but I like to kind of make a little jagged edges in there. I don't like to do it really smooth, especially when it's nature or it's an animal. I like to kind of, kind of turn my scissors in and out to give it a little fluffier look, kind of spike it up a little bit, gives it a little bit more natural look, like it's all, you could almost kind of see the feathers or the softness in the bird. So that's kind of what I'm doing, kind of twisting my scissors in and out. And um, His beak's a little curled here, so I want to keep his little curl. And then going back into his feathers, I'm just going to kind of kind of twist the scissors just a little bit and it just gives it that little bit of little bit of um, texture there just on his little edges. Okay, so all of these let's get rid of our mess and just making a pile over here so I can uh, get to it in just a minute. I'm going to grab my ink and I'm just going to kind of touch the edges of the birdhouse with the ink and you can use any ink you got you could even use I use calligraphy pens a lot to ink my edges a lot of the new um, a lot of the new brush pens are really good to ink edges with to cover up that kind of that white core I hate to see that white core um, just makes it more more like a or I guess more of a nicer embellishment if you just kind of ink those edges so that's our birdhouse all inked up ink up our bird and I want to move in I want to just kind of drag the ink into his body just a little bit to shade him some and see I'm just gonna just kind of rub it across his little feathers and 
try to get all that white core covered up and just give him some shading just a little bit with the ink. Okay, there's our bird. And then we want to get our little butterfly. He's a little more delicate. We'll get in there on him. And there he is. Touch up his little tentacles just a bit. Okay, he's all ready. Also want to do that with our little scallop here. Just going to touch the outside edges. And this would be a really good one to go in with. And I'll kind of show you that to go in with a brush. Let me grab one of my brush pens and I will show you what I mean. You take one, this is a Fabric Castell Pit Pen, and um, you can just kind of go in with the edge of that brush and get these little scalloped edges. You can even like run it on the inside of these little scallops as well. Get lots of details with these brushes. So just kind of, this is, this is a brown with this. You could use a brown or a black, but this just adds that little extra detail. Not necessary if you don't want to take the time to do it, but it just gives it a little bit more, a little bit more of that little custom feel if it's just all kind of touched up. So, and that again, that's the Fabric Castell, the big brush pit pen. That's a, the brown color. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is start preparing our layers. We do have a little bit more fussy cutting that I want to do to fill in around the flower. Let me find my, <clears throat> find my paper. What I'm going to do is go in and all of these flowers I'm just going to kind of chop out any flower that's on here and I'm going to try to keep the, the biggest leaves intact because I want to use them as well. And so this is what I do. I just kind of go around and chop them out first and I'm going to do this really quick y'all stay with me it's going to take just a minute to do this because I am going to do it fast so we're just going to kind of chop all that out and then I'm just going to go in with my scissors really really quick and get these out keep a few of the leaves intact fast 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 one This is why I love floral papers. I love to have things to fussy cut. It just, it stretches those embellishments and it just adds so much to your project to have these little fussy elements. And it's a stress reliever. It can lower your blood pressure if you just, if you just sort of get into it and let it just make you, make you calm down. I'm going to cut this little one here first. I'm going to keep his little, this is a little closed um, rose, it's just really pretty, so I want to get all of him. And I'm leaving some of the greenery, I'm just, like I said, not being real careful, just chopping that out, laying them to the side. Got some darker leaves on this one that I want to preserve, so just want to cut this big pink rose out. I hope my focus is okay, somebody let me know if I'm off camera or if my focus has gone wonky. Um, my screen has gotten dark, but I think it's just my, it's trying to go to sleep. Look how pretty, that is so pretty. Love that rose. Okay, we got some leaves here. I wanna get a few of these leaves. And you'll see in just a minute why these are so necessary for filling in. You just, you really do need them to fill in. This is kind of small cutting here. You see, I'm just, I'm just chopping out little leaves just so I have them. And I'll just lay everything else to the side so I can always grab more if I need them. I've got a few leaves here cut that I want to keep kind of a lighter color leaf here. You can see I wanted to cut those out. Can y'all kind of see that? Those little leaves. 
cut this little flower. It feels funny doing this on camera. I normally kind of do all this ahead, but I wanted you to kind of see how fast this is. For those of you who hate it and are not willing to try it, give it a try. It is, seriously, it'll lower your blood pressure. Trust me. There we have that one. So I think that's going to be it for the fussy cutting. Let's ink our edges up. Where'd my ink go? I'm going to grab a little bit darker ink, I think. For these, I'm just going to kind of touch the edge. I'm going to go in, kind of, kind of rub this in to shadow this just a little bit. Just get every one of these, just a little bit of ink. What I like to do when I get a paper line like this, I'll just, I'll just like way ahead of even an assignment, I'll just go in and sit by the TV or whatever I'm doing and just fussy cut. Um, and then I have it all ready when I'm ready to move into either the kit or the paper line or whatever if it's a new release or whatever I just I enjoy the fussy cutting process and my leaves or this is my little rose actually and my leaves and this poor um, chalk edger has seen its day it's it's shredding because I'm a little rough with them I think I've just um, I've shredded his little this little body so let me let me get these little pieces off my page okay so now we've got all of our pieces ready to go um, and what I want to start doing is just filling in some of these gaps with some some layers of uh, some more underneath layers of these flowers and you can see what I'm going to do is just kind of start kind of kind of poking them under and around want to kind of turn them up some. I kind of bend them to give them a little bit of life. I'm looking at the thing. Hey, Leslie, I'm looking at names again. Hey, Shannon. So, again, I can see y'all's names. I just can't see what you're saying. So, add a little glue as we go. I kind of know where I want to stick these. If, until you kind of know, you don't have to glue them down. You can just kind of stick them in and around. And you can always go back. I think I'm going to kind of cut this back off of this one just a little bit doesn't need to be quite that big. Add it right in there. Just about like that. And then we've got even the pieces of them when it's kind of straight on the bottom if it's fallen onto the selvage or whatever you can still use all of this. So just kind of add these kind of under and give them a little bend. Just give them a little, little extra kick in life. Just get them under there adding some glue and I'm like bending it and standing it up a little be careful when you go into your stitching that you're not shifting your stitching over with your glue just kind of pull at that just a little to be sure it's not moving I'm gonna go down here a little with with this add it right about there Kind of preserve these for just a minute because I'm going to go in with my um, with my birdhouse right there. But I want to grab another little piece of cardboard. Oh, I'm moving my table. Sorry about that. Add another little piece of cardboard. Oh my goodness, it's like sliding off into the floor. Help me get this stuff back up here. Okay. All right. I'm like working it right off my table. Uh, I think I actually gave y'all a little peek of my my. Uh, Prima mat that I've managed to get dirty. Um, that's why I continue to use it. I, you know, I have a few more that, um, a few more mats that are clean, but I continue to work on this one. What I'm going to do is just smash this cardboard down. I wanted it a little flatter to go up under. I don't want it quite raised quite as high, so I just kind of smashed it with my fingers to go up under the birdhouse. I want it popped up, but just not quite as much. Add the glue and add our birdhouse in right about here. Kind of go 
glue where I didn't want it, so I add it right about there. And what I'm going to do to stabilize that a little bit better, I'm going to take this little piece of cardboard that I have left, put some glue on both sides, and I'm going to tuck it under, under here, all the way under all the layers, so that that's pretty stable, so that's not collapsing. Once I put it in my book and all that fun stuff, I don't want it to collapse. So we're going to add that right about there. I'm just going to move the glue around so it'll dry a little bit quicker. Be sure I've got my little holes covered there. Okay. Next thing we're going to put is this little butterfly. Add a little glue. And it's going to go right about here. Just about like that. Next thing I want to do is um, add our photo. And I need another piece of cardboard. And I'm looking, oh, here it is looking around my room for my cardboard. I want to add another little piece of cardboard under where the photo is going to go. And I'm not actually going to add a photo tonight, uh, but I did use an oval, just a solid oval scallop circle, or a scalloped oval, just a little oval piece like this. Uh, and once that's cut, once the photo's cut with that, the photo will lay right there on that, on that little scallop section. But um, in the meantime, I just want to add some cardboard to the back. And I want it to pretty much not, it doesn't have to go from end to end, but you need a pretty solid piece back there, again, to prevent that from, from collapsing. So I want to add it right about here, just to the bottom of our, and what I'm going to have to do is go in with another piece of cardboard, because that's standing up going to add a piece of cardboard and this is what I do I just build it up you just add it until you've got it pretty stable just lift this up and add our cardboard right under so that it's just over the top of the little bottom section of our birdhouse I've got a little extra glue right there but that's going to be covered up eventually with a photo so that little glue won't matter just line that up just about like that so you can see I'm just kind of building, um, and the next thing we're going to start doing is building with our with our flowers and our title and everything, but that right there sort of gets you started, about like that. Now the fun part is going to be adding the flowers. We got a little bird, we want to add our little bird right up here at the top. We want him to have his little home right about there. I'm going to go ahead and glue him down and then I'm going to grab a piece of cardboard and um, y'all know what? This is taking longer than what I actually told you it was. Um, it's just once you get started you just it just seems to take longer than you think don't it? I figured we'd be out of here in 20 minutes but it's taking me a little bit longer. I'm probably talking too much. So I'm going to add that right about there. Just wanted to pop him up just a little bit and um have his little legs glued down some so you can kind of see where he's at. Just kind of show you how he's popped up just a little bit, how that is. So now it is time for our flowers. So let me grab all of our flowers and all of our embellishments. We've got some Say It in Crystal pieces that we're going to use. We've got some resin pieces we're going to use, and we've got lots of pretty flowers. As soon as I figure out where I, oh, there they are, I'm losing everything. We're going to use these flowers. This is um, the Archivist flowers. These two packs are Archivist, and this is from uh, Bella Rouge, and these are all Prima flowers. So, um... And line that up. Just kind of open these up. I'm going to stand my, going to stand my original up so I can kind of see what I did with them. So what we're going to do is start off with this pack. This is number five eight zero four five two. Go ahead and open these up. This is number. I can handle opening these because they're kind of most of them are kind of stuck 
and they won't fall off. This one is 580476, and this is a Bella Rouge 580568. So what we're going to do is just kind of lay these around. First off, I wanted a kind of a kind of a dark one right about there. I want this little pokey dot kind of here. Kind of see. I kind of like to start with sort of the medium ones and then they need to kind of fit together. I like them to fit together more like in a little natural state. So I have to work them out so that they're pretty they're pretty kind of fitting together. See how that's kind of tucking under there kind of nicely. Let's move all this so you can just see the page. I just kind of tuck that up under the um, little leaves there and um, I know I love him right there so I'm going to go ahead and glue him down just because he kind of fits the little leaves and then I'm going to kind of glue this one to where it kind of touches him and it just sort of it's a more natural look like like you would kind of find a a um, bouquet kind of in nature so then we've got our little our little pokey dotty one here I love the roses. I think the roses are my some of my favorites um, from these from this release from this CHA release lines. Um, this last time, I just I love these small roses, or they're kind of a medium sized rose, but I just I love them the way that they they kind of fit in and have that natural look about them. Next thing I want to do is start kind of going under. So I want to pull some of this kind of a creamy color. I'm not really worried about my leaves whether they show or not, but I want to tuck it under the actual fussy cutted area there and um, you just want kind of the, all those layers showing so that's sort of where I started with um, with these flowers here I want to pull this up and this but and this bird down because I want him and that's kind of what I do too I kind of as I'm adding things I make adjustments I love the Fabri-Tac because you can sort of move your flowers around want the bird kind of positioned behind the flower as if he's sitting on the flower so kind of pull that down and around right there need one in there as well so i want to grab one of these bella rouge i'm going to have to totally open these i guess they'll go everywhere but i want a little red so i want to grab this one and i just kind of like fluff him up add him right about here and pull my leaves up so it continues to show my layers he's right about there next I want to kind of move across the the page here and add a few more sort of and again I'm moving this black across to um, sort of balance that And I've lost my little pearl. That's okay. I'll go back in a minute. We can glue another pearl in. I'm being a little rough with these, trying to trying to kind of fluff them up. So I know that I want that kind of about there. We're gonna also pull that white across. I'm gonna add a kind of straighten our little thing up. We want a little white one right about there. I'm gonna take just a minute to kind of arrange these, and then I'm going to glue them down. So let's. Do that just about like that. I want to leave enough room to kind of tuck our photo in, so I may want to pull this out just a little bit. See how the Fabri-Tac just gives for a few minutes. You can just kind of slide things around. So I'm going to go ahead. I know I like those two there, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue these together. One thing you can do with these roses is you can kind of stick them together first and then lay them down. Kind of like that, and that helps. Then we'll add a little glue behind this one. Like I said, I'm not worried about the leaves. I don't mind if they show, but I don't mind if I if I glue them all down and they don't show either. That doesn't bother me. So I just want to kind of lay that right about there. Got that there, and I want to bring that down some. So I need to pull that polka dot color. So I want to do it, that's a little rose, but I want to use this little polka dot color here, kind of fluff that up there and use that right in behind. Add some, add some glue 
and I want to tuck it up under my frame just a little bit just so it kind of fits up in that corner can you kind of see how I sort of need to fit these together it just gives it a little bit more natural feeling to me um, need to add a little glue up under this white it's kind of not not sticking down so that little glue there just like that then we got to grab that red we added a red there so I want to grab another red or um, one with maybe a little red in it about like this and pull that across as well just got to keep that balance in there just always remember what you're doing on, in one area you want to kind of you know keep that circle or that triangle of um, color moving and a little more black just to um, just to kind of mimic that bouquet there and I don't know what else to call them besides bouquet I just I can't think of a of a word that would describe these little pieces but are these little clusters I guess they're more like little clusters next thing I want to do is grab this little brown one we've got some brown kind of in the the bird and kind of in the foliage uh, leaves and all there I just want to kind of kind of press him together to fluff him up a little bit add some glue and I'm gonna go under I'm gonna use my scissors to kind of raise this up because I want to go under our fussy cutting and add him there just a little bit of that's gonna kind of peek out See, that's just about what I want right there so you can see that's all kind of working working together right there I want to pull out grab my pointy scissors because I want to kind of pull his little petals out a little bit to sort of fill in that area and pull that white one down some just I, I adjust and readjust and readjust when I'm doing these little clusters so um, that's that's just me I want to add something kind of in this area here as well so these little roses just kind of sit really nice down and um, what I'm going to do is open this little rose out I want something really small so I'm going to remove him from the center take all these outside petals out and I'm going to preserve this because I'm still going to use it and I just want this little rosebud look right here and I'll just manipulate it just a little bit but I'm going to use the, just that little rosebud from the center so add a little glue here and I just kind of turn them until I like how they sit again be careful with your stitching that you're not moving it so that it's cattywankas you want it straight is that a word cattywankas that's is that an Alabama word that's an Alabama word I'm sure okay so we'll do that just about like that so I'm pretty happy with my with my floral kind of clusters now what I want to do is just kind of fill in across the top and I, what I'm going to do is take um, this one this flower here and it's just a little bit of a kind of a beigey mingled color and I want to just tuck it in right about here and it's going to be a little bit big so what I'm going to do is just kind of chop the back of it off and I'm going to preserve those little petals there because I, I may be able to tuck them in somewhere else so I'm just going to kind of tuck him in nobody will ever know that you did that just tuck him in right about there then we're going to grab this little guy right here and I want to tuck him in kind of in that same area but maybe a little bit maybe a little bit under that one and this is going to be a little bit different than what I originally did perfectly happy with that um, I always say I, I like I like them to be sisters not twins so this is a little rose and it's just kind of mingled in color so I want to tuck it in just kind of turn it around till I like how it lays right about there kind of see how that's going hope y'all can see what I'm doing here you see I'm just filling it in got flowers everywhere now it just seems like a huge cluster of flowers all the way across and you really don't have that many um, now we're going to use this um, little five petal piece that we pulled off the back I'm just going to kind of scrunch it up 
and open it out just a little bit. Add some glue. And we're going to use my little scissors. And we're just going to tuck that in right there. Right about there. No waste. We want no waste. So the next thing we're going to do is grab this little guy right here. He's just kind of a cream color. And I'm going to actually, again, cut the back of him off. Add a little glue. I need something right in this area right here, so I'm just going to add him just under there. Our title's going to go across here, so we don't need a lot right there. Then I'm going to use this little piece that I preserved, or that I reserved. I didn't preserve it, I reserved it. I'm going to stick him right about there. There he goes, right about there. Okay, then we're going to actually grab some of our little sequins. What time have we got him up? I got a few minutes. Okay, so then we're going to grab our butterflies. And these are the resin, uh, resin uh, icons from Prima. And I do not have the number, but they're, um, I think they're still available in a lot of places. So i um, got these. I'm going to grab two different ones. So we're going to put one right about here. Make sure my stitches are straight. We're going to put one right about there. And then we're going to put one right down here. So can you see? Move all this over out of our way. Clear all this mess. So you can see these last little embellishments. And this was really, I hope you all agree that this was really an easy page. It, um, it can be time consuming when you add the stitching and um, to add the, the little bit of um, modeling paste, when it, especially when it's an opaque color because you just mainly get texture. You're not getting a lot of color from it, but um, these papers that already have these beautiful scripts and the really pretty distressed areas on them already, I just, I don't, I don't want to touch them. I just kind of like to use them as is. So I just sort of go with whatever's there. So we've got our butterflies on, and then I want to add my title. So uh, the title I'm going to add tonight, I think we're going to use um, maybe Sweet Memories. I think that will, I think that will work right across the top here. Maybe. Yeah, we'll make that work. We'll tuck that in behind the flower just a little bit. But all I did for the title, if you can see that, all I did for the title was, and this these titles come from, they are 13 Arts, the Big Words Chipboard. Uh, so all I did was take my take my words a little. They're they're made from chipboard, so I just used some. I used some old road, this old road um, chalk edger, and I just touched it with the old road, and it's sort of a black gray color. Can you? I'm out of camera range there. Just kind of old road. Just touch it with that, and then I grab some black coal, and just in a few spots, didn't cover it with the black coal. Just sort of touched it. Gave it a little bit of a mingled look, uh, and you can use an older, an older um, black chalk edger so that you don't get so much of that juicy ink off. But just to add sort of a two-toned color there, and then I'm going to clean my glue up a little bit. I've got a mess on my glue, so let me clean it up so we can use that without it stringing to high heaven here. So I'm going to use my word memory, and I'm actually going to cut the S off. Well, maybe not. Um, I'm just going to cut the little leg of the S off, maybe, so we don't go off the page. Can't change the spelling, but just add just a touch of glue. You don't have to have glue all the way across. Just a few touches of glue here and there will be enough. And just lay your memory right about there. Another thing you can do to make that show up, well, you didn't see where I laid it because I was off camera. 
lay it right about there. Another thing you can do to make this show up a little more, since we are going with the black sort of dark gray color, and I did that again to create my triangle because I've got black, 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 um, or dark gray. You just need that balance of color. But you could go back in with a little paintbrush, and I'll just kind of show you. You could grab a paintbrush and a little bit of the white, one of the white chalk edgers. Just put a little color on your nonstick mat with a little water. Just spray a little water right there. You see, I just got a little water bottle and dip your brush in water and then a little bit in the white and just touch in a few places on your title and you will kind of highlight that so that it's a little more noticeable so if you if you think that's just too dark in that area then just sort of touch it with the white and when that dries it'll dry pretty opaque looking it won't be a, it won't be a big won't be a big um area of white just a little next thing i've got here are some uh dobecraft sweet paris uh what are these little babies um I'm trying to think what they're called they the, the name of them's left me but i want to use only red little sequins hello sequins i'm only going to use red they come black gold and red but i'm just using the red i want to i want to bring more red across my page and these are bigger and smaller and um, I love these, so uh, I'm going to just take a few out. They're all, they're staticky, so they're sticking together and they're sticking to my fingers and my fingers are gluey, so they're kind of everywhere. They are literally not wanting to turn loose of my hands. They're, they're stuck. So just take out a few more. And for these little sequins, I like to use a little Tombow glue forever ago uh, Robbie did a show when she I think her first show she used the Tombow glue well I had to buy like six bottles of it because I thought I, I thought I needed that much I don't need that much it goes forever but I love it for these little these little guys so I'm grab my Tombow glue and I'm moving the table sorry about that I should have had all this on the table ready to go but I didn't. I'm going to grab my combo glue. I've gone through one bottle so I'm having to open a new bottle. And what I'm going to do is just add just a little dot of glue to my butterfly and then with my scissors I'm just going to pick that up and lay that there. Add another one right here to my butterfly. And I'm just going to pick that right up and lay that right there. And then just in a few areas, I'm going to add some glue. And I'm going to add a few of these sequins. So just this one right about here. Get a small one, if I can get a hold to it. Small one right about here. And I could probably do this with tweezers too, but I'm so used to using my scissors at this point. But I just used my scissors. Turn that one over. Right about there. Come over here and add one right about here. I'm trying to go by what I did um, on my other page. And this is so clear, I can't tell. I'm having to feel for it. I dropped my glue in the floor, so I'll grab it. Okay, so let's just sort of wipe all these away and see where we might need another one. I'm going to add one right about here. This one needs to be turned over as well. Add it right about there. Pick his little thread up so it kind of goes over the top of it. Right about there. So, um, just a couple more right over here. And we will be done. This is this is the um this is the finished page this is all that i did to this page so you can see i hope we made it within the hour i surely thought i was going to be done sooner that's funny how time just gets away from you i did on these two on the butterfly i did go back and add a couple of black ones 
So just in the center of your red sequence, your larger red sequence, add a small black one just for a little, a little more detail, a little more, a little more, whatever. So that is it. And that is our entire page. That is done. Um, so, and I, like I said, I won't be able to pan up, but you can see our finished page completely done. So, what time do we have? Aha! 9.02. I am almost on time. So, um, that's it. Uh, see, y'all, a lot of y'all hung with me, so y'all, um, it wasn't too monotonous, I hope. It just, um, just a pretty floral page, just a pretty simple floral textured page. So, that is it for me. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for joining me. Don't forget to join us next week, uh, Wednesday night, same time, same place. Uh, I did not check the schedule, so I'm not sure who's going to be with us, but, Whoever it is, it'll be a wonderful show. So just don't forget to um, to join us. The chat's always fun. And I will be on chatting with you next week. So y'all have a great night. And um, see you later on. Bye.